Today, we've got a whole bunch of new project parts. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. It is mailbag time on the channel again, guys. Welcome back. This is a segment where I show you the goodies that I get for my different projects and nifty things. And well, hopefully uh, gives you some ideas on things to get. And sorry if it lightens your pocketbook. First out of the box, we have a Runcam Split Mini. Now I believe this is the same camera or very similar uh, to what I used on the mini AR wing build. This is a full HD FPV camera that we're going to use um, for basically, this is a little GoPro, um, like kind of similar to like the session five kind of quality, I think, except we can fly through it as well. So that'll be uh, probably for the next Nano Talon build. Um, not really sure where we're going to use that one just yet, but uh, I slow boat shipped that one um, because I didn't need it right away. So it's, uh, yeah, quite a few months. These were an Amazon order, kind of on a lark. Um, five of these, and if they're what they're supposed to be, these should be little humidistats, little humidity sensors, um, with temperature on board too. And that's all they are. Um, oh, it does have a Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's kind of cool. I'm actually a little surprised about that. Is it just a button? It feels like a button. Yep, sure enough. 19 degrees, that's bang on what we're, we should be in here. Um, if not a tiny bit colder, 45% relative humidity. That's pretty much bang on too. Um, nifty little things. Too bad they come with the batteries active. Just take a button cell, nothing to them. And uh, I have a project in mind where I'd like to use these and we'll see. Um, we obviously have the DHT11. Um, DHT22s for Arduino and Raspberry Pi use, but these are a standalone. We could probably hack into them too um, and, and output the data, but uh, yeah, I'll put the link down below for these in case you're interested. Oh, this is a random thing. Um, hey, why not? Well, we're here. Uh, this USB cable came um, with uh, what did I get today? Oh, um, uh, Bluetooth soundbar. And uh, every time these cables come in, I never know whether they're any good to keep or whether I should just bin them in case they're just power. And here is this, uh, is it me or is it is it US, just USB uh, tester that I got off a Tindy store a while ago. Uh, you can just Google, is it me or is it just USB? Uh, or if I remember, I'll link it down below. But this is a good cable. This is lighting up that uh, our data lines and power both work on that. So I wish these things were made with all the different styles of USB in parallel. That would be super cool. But uh, this is USB mini or micro i always get the two confused the rounded one anyway cool little thing anyway good enough usb cable too some motors uh these are replacement robot motors because i used the one in the uh diy shaker table that you already saw the video on the channel the lab shaker table and i uh, ended up breaking one as well when i was making that so two spares um this is science stuff Let's see. These are TDS meters. This is for total dissolved solids. Um, I got these because I started um, making my own distilled water. Um, I got a countertop distiller from eBay and I didn't I didn't care to check my own water because I know it's distilled. It, the science is pretty basic. It went out the top, so therefore there's not going to be much for total any solids left in it. But uh, I wanted to check the water that I was buying. 
um, from the local water shop. Uh, it's RO water and distilled water that I was purchasing before I started making it myself. So I just went on eBay and got one, got, actually I got a few of these. Um, I also got a pH meter you saw in a previous mailbag, but these are just total dissolved solids. All they are is electrical conductivity um, probes in the end of it. And it just determines the conductivity of the water. And by that, you can determine what the total dissolved solids are, which uh, uh, I did uh, I have another one of these that came in first and I did check my distilled water. And of course, it's 0, 0.000. But I haven't got around to checking the store-bought stuff yet. So yeah, kind of neat. Fun little science. And along with that, there's a whole package of pH powder. This is for calibration and check of my pH probe. Um, not very often I need that. I have a pH probe in my saltwater reef tank upstairs uh, that I really honestly, I've never checked the calibration on it since it was new. I, I don't know whether it's drifted or not, but um, here's the different pH uh, values that are uh, kind of guaranteed to be what they're supposed to be. So kind of cool along the nature of the lab stuff. These, these can be both lab equipment and just dang handy to have. If you haven't seen these before, these are little applicator, um, I don't even know, syringes of sorts. These are three milliliters they hold. Um, just squeeze bulb on the end, draw the fluid up into them and dispense it back out. Uh, they are disposable and they are fantastic for uh, glue and stuff. Let me grab my glue. So if you're cyanacrylate glue, uh, if your tip gets clogged to the point where you had to cut it down and it's too big or whatever and it's no good anymore, well, here you go. You can just use one of these, uh, apply your glue and throw it away when you're done. This also works to apply glue in areas that you can't reach. So. If you're building a model airplane or something and you want to apply glue way down deep inside on a bulkhead or whatever, or you want to reinforce a 3D printed aircraft or a 3D printed part in an area that's hard to get to and you don't want to make a mess, these applicators are absolutely wonderful for that. Uh, I've used these since I was a kid. We even used to, we used to pick them up at Toledo in, uh, at the Weak Signals Expo in Toledo, Ohio, and uh, use them for glue back then. So they've been around a lot of years. They're uh, pretty standard stuff. Okay, I'm getting yakking. I get excited about all these cool new toys. Lollipop antenna, right-hand circular polarized 5.8 gigahertz antenna for my FPV. I'm really in love with these lollipop antennas now. This is a clone of the Fox Ear, I believe. Um, I doubt there's... Well, actually, it does say lollipop on it. I uh, don't remember whether this is an actual Fox Ear. I don't think so, or it would be branded. This must be a knockoff. But uh, they were, they were bloody great. I'm actually really impressed on how well these work. I was impressed with the pagoda antennas as well. That doesn't sound good. Uh, that might actually go away. Um, sometimes these the guts of an antenna are reliant. Ah. Oh. When you got two sticks and all you need is a hole. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes threading it down um, will we'll take up the, the lash in there. <laughs> it's probably fine. Okay, next up. Arduino and FPV and electronics. These are the uh, BN220 GPSs. This is what I use for all my iNav builds now. Um, anything iNav gets along with this, this GPS really well. It's small, it's light, it's fairly fast to get a fix and pick up satellites. And it works really well with Arduino projects too. So that's just handy dandy. So there's two more of them. And... 3DR radios. This, I don't know how well this is going to work because these are not the 3DR branded uh, radios. These are uh, 433 megahertz, not the 900s. So these are just um, serial receiver and transmitter. 
um, I did a video just recently on iNav getting these working and I was so happy that I can program my iNav from my laptop with uh, over the air now and get telemetry home. Um, but I, I don't know how well this is going to work. Would, I had trouble with the no-namers. The 3DR radios worked flawlessly though. But uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. I think I can make it work. We can make anything work here on the channel. We're resilient that way. <laughs> That's why you guys come around and watch my videos, I think. Either that or just watch me just smash my head against the wall sometimes. <laughs> These are some inserts. Um, just brass inserts. Uh, looks like uh, M3 on those ones. Uh, looks like M2 possibly on some other ones here. These M, you know, M3 as well. Just different M3 inserts and uh, what you do is um, when you want to fasten a 3D printed part and put threads into it, you just set your soldering iron on one of these and just melt it down in and then uh, let it cool. And your bushing, your threaded bushing is now uh, all ready to accept a, a metric screw or a metric bolt. So yeah, handy. I've never had these before. Um, I have used them before, but I've never had my own stock. Um, I don't know where I got them. Um, the one time I have found a couple kind of buried in my toolbox, but we'll give them a go. Well, there's some larger ones too. Very cool. Neat little assortment. Cheers, guys. Hope you get some ideas for some project parts or, uh, yeah, just fun to hang out with you and throw a thumbs up on this video if you like mailbags. I know I do. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects.